Give the order. We're closing shop. Ma'am? We're about to get hit. All personnel. The wounded. Code Alpha We're getting all of them out. Immediate evacuation. I have to carry them myself. Ma'am, squad leaders are requesting a rally point. Where should they go? To war. What the fuck is that supposed to mean, you fucking bitch? This is a fucking crisis situation and a tactical- Finish the fight. This was a slogan for Halo 3, starting from the beginning and properly ending what you started. A finale in any medium can be difficult to create. You have to send off all of your characters exactly in the right way, and leave no loose ends in your story. Some finales definitely disappoint, especially in movies and video games. But, in my opinion, in 2007, Bungie, in my opinion, did it pretty well. Halo 3, in my opinion, properly ended the OG Halo trilogy, and also launched probably one of the best multiplayers of all time, at least in my opinion. For one, the lead up to this game was absolutely just insane. All the kick ass trailers, all the awesome freaking tie in promotions. a freaking Halo styled Mountain Dew, like what? Somehow fan anticipation for Halo 3 was absolutely even higher than it was for Halo 2. After playing Halo 2 and finding out the game ended on a ball busting cliffhanger, <clears throat> fans immediately wanted to know what would happen next, and as soon as possible. The hype for this game was almost like a coming of God search of situation. It was absolutely insane. The phrase, finish the fight, was the line the Chief said at the end of Halo 2, and it became basically the phrase of everyone's opinion and motivations for Halo 3, but also would describe fan hype, the marketing, and ultimately Halo 3 itself. Since, well, in this game, you're going to be finishing the fight. And with all it said and done, the game did eventually finally release in 2007, with even Bill Gates selling the first freaking copy of Halo 3. Like, isn't that crazy? This just shows you how insanely popular and hyped Halo 3 was. The fan anticipation was absolutely crazy. So many crazy, insane stories that just honestly could fill up an entire video on themselves, but we don't have time for that. Halo 3 era was truly, in my opinion, a peak Halo. But with the dust settled and all said and done, does Halo 3 honestly hold up after over 10 years of being released? Also, did Halo 3 satisfy conclude the trilogy that Bungie started? Well, in this video, like always, we're going to discuss my thoughts on the game's campaign, the multiplayer, and of course Halo 3's legacy. So I guess this is not a better time, but without further ado, let's jump in and let's finish the fight. After the events of Halo 2 and the cliffhanger that left us with Chief heading back to Earth, Chief eventually does get the land on Earth and reunites with UNSC forces and fights against the Covenant and Truth. Eventually though, Truth opens a portal and the Flood actually make its way back to Earth, and Chief must fight and contain. After this, a splinter force of elites, humans, heads into the portal and after receiving a message from Cortana, and head in and discover the place called the Ark. The Force lands on the Ark and finds the cartographer and heads to the control room to stop Troop. They eventually do this and eventually Chief and Arbiter manage to stop the Ark from firing and kill Troop and save Johnson but Miranda gets sadly killed in the game. After this the Flood eventually are still on the loose with high charity reaching and slip spacing into the Ark. Chief discovers the replacement for the Halo ring that they destroyed in the very first game and decides to use it to wipe out the Flood once and for all. Chief succeeds in doing this, saves Cortana also, but also sadly loses Johnson in the process. But you get the kill 343 Guilty Spark. In the end, you manage to stop the Flood and the Arbiter makes it back to Earth while Chief floats in outer space ending Halo 3's campaign and story. Now for my thoughts on the story of Halo 3. I think the story of Halo 3 is still pretty goddamn good, but it isn't quite as good as Halo 2. For one thing, I think that the story's narrative is good, but it has not as complex themes or just as much action as it did in Halo 2 in my opinion. But still, I think for pros there's a lot of pros of Halo 3. 
For one, I really like how the Narrative 3 has that same feeling of like, fuck yeah, we gotta do this shit like in Halo 2, which was pretty awesome. It was really awesome seeing the sense of finality in Halo 3's campaign and story. It's an awesome feeling finally concluding everything that we started back in Halo 1. It feels like we've been on some kind of massive journey from Halo 1, 2, and all the way now to 3. It's a great feeling. This is also pretty shown well in the story itself. You get to do a lot of things and nicely wrap up the conclusion of the series. For example, you get to kill the Covenant by killing Truth. You also get to complete the Arbiter's Arc by him killing Truth in the game as well. You also get to rescue Cortana, which is something that you started from Halo 2. And you also get to save the galaxy and kill the Flood and the Gravemind also in this game, finishing what you started back in 2. In this game, you truly finish the fight with many other fights also included. It's a great feeling overall. I really have to hand it to Halo 3 because many third entries in the series can't do a finale well, but I think Halo 3 truly did it pretty well. It wrapped up a lot of story arcs and characters and plot lines from the previous games, but also having nice callbacks to the other games as well. For themes and story, I think Halo 3 isn't as strong or as complex as Halo 2, but nonetheless still has a lot of strong and very solid themes and story. Like I said before, the sense of completion and ending is very strong in Halo 3, with you even returning to the first Halo you were on in the first game just to end the game in Halo 3 and stuff, which is a really nice sense of completion and overall feeling of finality. Also, the theme of honoring sacrifices is a thing in Halo 3, with this idea of honoring the fallen like Miranda and other people at the end of the game. It also adds to the theme of completion about remembering those who fought, but also just remembering the Fallen as well. Also, another idea brought forward with Halo 3 is this idea of working together to stop a common foe. This is seen quite a bit in Halo 3, like 343 Guilty Spark teaming up with you and working with you, with the Elites working with you, and even the freaking Flood at one point. This overall idea of working together and sort of banding together for the common enemy is pretty important in Halo 3, and I've noticed as well when I'm analyzing the themes for this game. And there are also many other themes I can go into as well, but I still think Halo 3's main theme overall is kind of just finishing what you started. Finishing the fight, so to speak. Not necessarily a bad idea, and like I said before, the themes are not as complex as it is in Halo 2, but there's still a lot of solid themes that I feel like I needed to mention and point out. Now, of course, we gotta talk about Master Chief's design. I think this is kind of a common thing I'm gonna do with all the mainline Halo game videos, but whatever. <laughs> In Halo 3, it's pretty much the same as Halo 2's design, but just better graphics, which, once again, no complaints coming from me since it's still my favorite Chief design, nonetheless. Another thing people have pointed out over the years with Halo 3 is that there's no more split narrative this time around, and there's also going to be less Arbiter this time around. It's not exactly he's erased from the game, he's still there, especially when you're playing the game on co-op, but, like I said, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Yes, we did have the really cool split narrative in Halo 2, exploring more of the Covenant side of things and all of that, but that was Halo 2. And in my opinion, Halo 3's narrative is perfectly fine. I would not have mind have seen more of the Covenant or more of the Arbiter's opinion of the events, but nonetheless, it's still kind of solid. Halo 3 also just has many kick-ass moments in general, like when Chief meets Arbiter and the memes that came from that. escaping the Ark or rescuing Cortana, there's just so many great moments in Halo 3 that just makes the game awesome. Also, that ending. I don't mean that ending from Halo 2, but the ending with Chief floating in space. It was pretty great in my opinion. It wasn't too final with like Chief dying in Halo 3, it wasn't like they're gonna conclude the series like that way where it was gonna be completely final, but it left enough room that they ever wanted to make Halo 4, which they eventually did with 343, they could absolutely do so. Now for another aspect I like about the game, the voice acting. I think all the voice acting in the game for the most part is pretty great in this video. I've sadly forgotten to mention the voice actors in all my Halo reviews sadly, and it's something that someone had to brought up to me after watching my reviews, but all the voice acting up to this point has all been pretty great in the games, and this is no exception for Halo 3. Steve Downs as the Master Chief is always great in this game, and this is no exception to Halo 3 as well. Keith David still gives a strong performance as the Arbiter in this game, which is just fire. Jen Taylor is also as Cortana is amazing. And like I said, I do think that most of the voice acting is pretty good, 
But there are also other issues with the voice acting that I will get into later in my con section. Also, I think that the dialogue in Halo 3 is also really solid, with many great lines and great callbacks to the original, which only makes sense that this is the finale to the series, the one that was supposedly going to end it all, so yeah. Trying to kill each other. Were it so easy? Pow! Oh! I also think another part of the campaign I like is also the cutscenes. It's like kind of a thing that a lot of people don't talk about in video games, but cutscenes are extremely important to your video game. It's the things that are responsible for telling the story, but also displaying what is going on in the story. And I think that Halo 3 does this pretty well. Each cutscene has their own highlights and just great direction and angles. It really makes Halo 3 feel like some kind of epic movie or something. Really high quality stuff, and I think Halo 3 does it so well. Now for graphics and gameplay. First graphics. Over the years, Halo 1 and 2 have already gotten remasters, but some have questioned why doesn't Halo 3 have an anniversary edition or some kind of remaster to happen. And coming from the perspective of someone that didn't grow up necessarily on Halo 3 because I really just grew up on Halo Reach instead, I think the graphics for the most part hold up and don't look that bad. Yes, there are some occasional bad textures here and there, but for the most part, an over 10 year game, I think Halo 3 is pretty solid. And even though I'm not totally against the idea of having an anniversary edition, I would say either one, having it much later on, or two, just not having one at all. I think the graphics still overall hold up in Halo 3. Now for gameplay. I think Halo 3, hands down, has the best OG Halo gameplay. What I mean by this, I mean no sprints or loadouts. For one, all the guns in this game are way more balanced than Halo 2. No overpowered needlers or battle rifles, which makes gunplay in Halo 3 much more fun. Also bringing back classics like the Magnum and the Assault Rifle, the quintessential Halo weapons, also back into the sandbox is just great. Also the introduction of new weapons like the Gravity Hammer and other weapons and also equipment is really awesome as well. Now let's talk about the varieties of stuff you can do in Halo 3 was just freaking awesome. For example, like I mentioned before, equipment is cool and awesome and a nice addition to the Halo series. My particular favorite is the bubble shield by the way. Also the new vehicles like the mongoose which was a scrapped idea from Halo 2 is all very solid. You also got the chopper and other great brute vehicles introduced in Halo 3 that just makes it awesome. Also other ideas that were scrapped in Halo 2 but are brought in for Halo 3 are pretty much shown quite a bit in Halo 3. For example the mongoose like I mentioned earlier it was completely cut in Halo 2 but brought in for Halo 3. Also this idea of co-op campaign, online co-op campaign to me in particular. This was a really awesome feature for Halo 3 since well you can play as the Arbiter or the Master Chief with friends and play the campaign with friends. I know it's a small feature and a common feature in games today but it's an extremely awesome feature and nonetheless just a really great feature overall. Also the Scarab in Halo 3 was extremely fun. For example, in Halo 2 it was a pretty scripted part and you couldn't really take it down in any particular way, you just kind of had to jump in and shoot the core and that was the cutscene part, but Halo 3 is different. You can take down the Scarab in any way you like. You can either shoot it down or you can possibly get inside of it and be a crazy madman and try to jump on it with a mongoose. Either way, it was really awesome in Halo 3. It's nice that you have the freedom in Halo 3 that just allowed to explore and take it down any way. The Scarab was truly fun. Also, just the levels in general and the map space. I know it's kind of a weird thing to mention, but a lot of games these days have these narrow, very scripted parts of your campaign and story. And that's true somewhat for Halo 3, but also Halo 3's levels are just great. They open up a lot more than Halo 2 and allow you to do more things on your own and just have your own fun. I also think that with the third entry in this series, the presentation of Halo 3's story and campaign was kind of better than Halo 2. For one, I think that the pacing of Halo 3's story is way better than Halo 2. Halo 2 at points was extremely fast paced as a story and campaign, and sometimes that was to the detriment of the story. But Halo 3 honestly has perfect pacing. None of the events feel too slow, but none of the events feel too fast. It's like perfect pacing. Also, the extra details in Halo 3's campaign and story in accordance with presentation are just awesome. For example, the little lines that the Marines say to you in certain moments or in relation to your events 
is pretty awesome and just adds some extra detail. You can also participate in extra moments in the story and campaign. For example, there's actually one section where if you stop this brood in time, you can actually save this marine. Once again, just nice extra detail. Also, there's moments where like the Arbiter says certain things to his brothers as he's killing them. Like, he doesn't exactly enjoy what he's doing and you can see the personal conflict. And at least it was explored a little bit in Halo 3. This overall, this extra detail makes Halo 3's campaign and story just solid and a nice conclusion. It acts an extra level in detail that a lot of her stories don't add. Fight me! I'm right here! For the great journey! And, the, and, and then they got up and started to talk! Oh god! Their voices! Oh god! Now, even though I'm already known I'm being a dead drum at this point, but the music for Halo 3 is still kick-ass as hell. I don't know what Mario O'Donnell does with these Halo soundtracks, but each time they're still awesome as hell. And this is no different for Halo 3 soundtrack. The music for Halo 3 is a little bit different than Halo 2, but it's still great overall. The music focuses on more gentler melodies and tones, and is also focused on emphasizing certain moments in the story, making the story feel more grand and once again adding that extra detail to the campaign. Mario O'Donnell overall delivers a great soundtrack with this, one of my personal favorite song in the game being the last song in the game with Chief Floating in Space. Overall just some awesome stuff. Now for cons for Halo 3's campaign and story. For one, I think that like I mentioned earlier with the voice acting, there are some issues with that. For one, Bungie decided to replace key characters voices in the game with other people's voices, which is very weird for a finale in your series. This isn't bad for the case of Miranda who had her voice actor change, since hers isn't as noticeable and her actress does a fine job, but it actually shows mainly for Truth. Truth was replaced by an actor called Terrence Stamp, who is pretty good in some roles in movies, but in my opinion does not fit Truth at all. He really honestly sounds more like regret or maybe mercy. Truth in Halo 2 sounded slimy, calculating, and very dark and sinister. Well, Halo 3 Stamp's performance honestly sounds like a crazy old prophet, which I guess is maybe the thing they were trying to go for, but it just does not fit the character in my opinion, they should have kept the original voice actor. Another issue I have with the campaign is actually the Cortana and Gravemind moments, which everyone knows about. These are extremely annoying moments and for some reason always stop gameplay. It's not necessarily a bad decision to have Cortana sprinkled throughout the game. I think Halo Infinite honestly did this way better, but it did not need to stop gameplay at all. It especially gets to the point where it gets to the Cortana level and it just gets extremely annoying. You will show me what she hides, or I shall feast upon your bones. I'm not saying that it's the worst decision in Halo 3, but it just does not need to be there, and overall just a very bizarre decision. But yeah, that was mostly my flaws and cons with Halo 3 story. I still think it's an overall pretty nice finale to the series, but a campaign is only part of the game. What most people remember about Halo 3 is of course the biggest impact, which was the Halo 3 multiplayer. <laughs> The multiplayer of Halo 3 was kind of just, I mean, a lot of videos have already covered it well, but definitely impacted a lot of people. For me, personally, I've played a lot of Halo 3's multiplayer, and I have enjoyed it quite a bit. 
It's a pretty great multiplayer with a lot of very balanced weapons and guns and also the maps and just the amount of things you can do in Halo 3. It's kind of embarrassing how a game that was over 10 years old has a multiplayer that's still being played and celebrated and also has more content than the recent Halo release, which is just crazy. Many maps in Halo 3 still hold up for me. You got classics like Sandtrap, Valhalla, and many more. Overall, the variety of maps in Halo 3 was just great, and the number of them was also very great. You also, if you get the chance to play Halo 3 on the MCC, it also includes Master Chief maps and Halo 3 maps that were just basically cut out of the original release, but were actually put in the MCC, which is just awesome. Also, like the amount of game modes available at launch, of course, was also just great. You got classics and my personal favorites like Capture the Flag, which is honestly my personal favorite. You also got Fiesta, King of the Hills, Slayer, and just so many great modes to play with your friends and stuff online. It's awesome. Also, the amount of customization in Halo 3 was pretty awesome. Granted, it's not like reach levels of customization, but like I said, Bungie hadn't gone to that point yet. But the amount of customization you can still do in Halo 3 is pretty goddamn solid stuff. And also another thing you like about the customization is you have to earn all the stuff that you get in your armors and medals and stuff. There's no loot boxes in Halo 3, so that you actually have to earn your stuff with talent challenges and all that. So the sense of community and customization in Halo 3 is awesome, and this is no different when Halo 3 introduced Forge, which was pretty basic in Halo 3, but it was still an awesome feature which allowed you to create freaking maps and designs of your own. Yes, it was still primitive like I said, but still also dope as hell, and at launch as well. There was also a theater mode introduced as well which you could just replay moments with your friends. Once again, pretty great stuff. Overall, Halo 3's multiplayer was for me a great and game chasing experience. It featured many great modes, guns, maps, and just a sense of community. There's so many videos about Halo 3, but just the fact that there's so many videos about Halo 3's multiplayer just shows you how crazy an impact it was. Friends were made, moments were created, and experiences will always be remembered on Halo 3. It's kind of crazy too that the 360 version of the multiplayer lasted so long like it lasted over 10 years and ended in 2019 and the fact that it was still going for that long and that people celebrated its last day online just shows you how insanely popular halo 3's multiplayer was and also including me and to a lot of people it still is overall in conclusion halo 3 was truly peak halo era never again would halo be this popular and this game changing and this captivating the industry and even though time has moved on and Halo 3 is still there back in the past, I think for the most part, over 10 years later, Halo 3 still holds up for me. I think overall, Halo 3, after 10 years later, still holds up pretty well for me. It told a great story and nicely wrapped up a journey started back in 2001 and ending in 2007. It also created a multiplayer to top it off that was extremely well received and also extremely popular. It created people's friends for them, it created many life changing experiences for people. It was an insanely impactful and amazing multiplayer that's still being discussed to this very day, which is just awesome. So, if I had to give Halo 3 a rating, which is pretty hard for a game that you honestly love and have so many nostalgic memories with, I'll probably have to give Halo 3 honestly a full 5 out of 5 Jackal Snipers. It may seem like a weird decision since I gave Halo 2 a slightly lower score, but that's because I feel like the multiplayer in Halo 3 is extremely more better than Halo 2, at least in my opinion. So yeah. That was Halo 3 in my opinion. Once again, thank y'all for watching, and like I said, thank y'all for supporting me in making these videos, and I'm going to keep continuing the fight with the Halo series. So, yep, yeah, see y'all later.